Carla, and I'm really excited to introduce to you today a new product and a whole new approach to painting in watercolor. Uh, it's watercolor on canvas. And of course, canvases are great. They come pre-stretched, and they come and they're already primed, and they're ready for oil painters and acrylic painters, but they're not quite ready for watercolor painters. They come in various profiles from narrow to deep. And I'm just going to show you how I put this product on. I'll just choose this narrow profile. And you can see they're, they're professionally done. A really nice Winsor Newton. <laughs> and this is the product. It's by Golden. And it's called Watercolor Cold Press Ground. Now, it's very unusual in that it's very thick. You can see there's no, uh, it's not like regular gesso. And what I do is I use just a bristle brush to put it on because the brushes, you can see I've been using this all summer and it's getting pretty worn out. But you don't want to use your good brushes to do this. And what I do is I just take a little bit out of the jar and dab it on in a number of places. And then I spread it out really, really thin. One of the biggest mistakes people make with this is they put way too much on. It's not necessary at all. So you can see that little bit on my brush is going pretty far. I'm even going to pull it down here a little bit. You can, I mean, the thing is you can put it on thick if you want. My choice is not to put it on so thick. And it, I think it's totally amazing. I can get as many as 20 canvases primed out of this one little container here. So once you have your picture primed, you're ready to begin painting. So what I'll do is just finish this part up quickly. Now as, as I do this, it gets full of little pills. You can see it's happening. When you want to smooth it out, it gets worse. The first time this happened to me, I couldn't believe it. But I'll show you. Hang on a minute. I'm going to do the sides, and there is a trick to finishing it. Now, a lot of people think, oh, this is so thick, I have to add water. But it's not a good idea. Put it on nice and thick. Smooth it out really good. And in a very short time, this will dry, and you're ready to start. One of the problems with the other watercolor grounds that have been available is that they, they require two or three coats, and then they require 72 hours to dry. This is phenomenal. In just a short time, this will be dry. So here's that little trick I was going to tell you about. I simply put my brush in the water, and the last strokes I do on this surface are with just pure water. Water and I go back, and this gives it a fairly smooth surface. The interesting thing is, it, it doesn't dry with a real smooth surface. It's still pretty rough. So that's why I want you to use these bristle brushes and not your own watercolor brushes. So in a matter of about 10 minutes, this is going to be ready to start drawing and painting. Now, as you can see, I've been drawing, having a great time here with these uh, diptych. And I think doing diptychs, triptychs, whatever, are fantastic on this. I've got the deep profile. What I like about the deep profile is when they're completed, you don't even have to put a frame on it. You just hang it on the wall. So for watercolor artists, this is phenomenal. The fact that we can just paint on the surface, no mat, no glass, just, uh, if you want, a simple frame is fine. Otherwise, you put a finish on it. I must mention this. Uh, another product that's involved in this process is called the Dorland's Wax Medium. And I think this is used in cold, cold wax projects and other, there's, it's been around for a while, but this is a phenomenal way to finish the painting and I'll show you that a little later. So what I'm up to now is just drawing on the surface you can see with my HB pencil, I just come in here and directly draw right on the surface. And as I'm working, I can just make mistakes. Doesn't make any difference. If I make a mistake, all I do is take my little eraser and it will clean up just like a regular paper surface. 
get rid of those extra little particles. And what I'll do is just paint a little bit on here. There are, some of the techniques used for painting on watercolor are a little different than they are on a regular cold press surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here. These poppies, I decided I wanted to make these poppies in the pink range. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a dark purple. This is just some permanent magenta. And I'm just going to start down here close to the flower. And all along this edge, and the, the thing that's different, usually when I paint poppies on watercolor paper, I do it on by wetting it first. And so a lot of what I'm doing is actually wet. And the colors are moving around, wet into wet. You can do that. But for this particular lesson, I wanted to do how I generally approach painting with no background at all. See, when I'm done with this painting, it probably won't have a background. It's just, so I'm putting the colors on very intense. The next thing I do is put in some alizarin crimson. This is a very deep red. And you'll notice that I started above. Being a diptych, I have to paint both sides at once. So I start this above the other color. And I've got a lot of paint here. This is not a little bit of paint. This is a lot of paint. I don't think I washed my brush out. OK, so now I'm cooking. I've got my alizarin crimson. And like I say, I start it above. And then what I do is I simply back into the color. And this will give me this lovely transition. Very different from how I work in watercolor. And I gotta line this up here. And I'm gonna put just a little bit more in here. And we are, I'm just gonna end it here. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is switch my color again. This time I'm gonna come in with some quinacridone coral. And again, I start it above. Ah, we don't worry about those splashes. They all, everything on this surface lifts. And again, I'm going to push this color into the previous color to get that nice transition. Go from side to side. Now my last transition is going to be just with water. So what I'll do is start at the top here and just allow this to roll up. So I really love the surface. It's very close to working on cold press watercolor. This painting style does have some limitations. And the biggest limitation is that you can't layer the colors very well. But other than that, oh, it's really fun to work on this surface. And you can see it now. It stays wet a really long time. So if I want to start doing some lifting, and, or if I want to add some more colors, I can do it. It's really phenomenal. And what I like to do is start creating some of the folds that you see in the poppies. You just take usually a flat brush and wipe it fairly dry. And then you just start here and it will lift the color back to the white and give you that opportunity to come in and do some lifting and moving around. Then I love, at this stage, I love doing a little wet into wet too. In this case, I'm going to take some alizarin crimson and some phthalo green, and I'm going to make a black. And then with this black, I'm just going to come in and put in some of those really dark sex organs over here. Yeah, all right. And those are going to fuzz out, and that's what I want. When then when I come back, I'll do a dry layer, and those will be crisp. So that's just a simple introduction to working on canvas. And I'm going to continue and show you there are a lot of other opportunities. OK. Well, here's an example of a poppy painting that's completed. You can see I have a real simple uh, shadow box frame on it, not too expensive. 
And this was the very first one I did on canvas. And the thing that was amazing to me is I could also do color sanding. So you'll notice when you look at some of these reds that you see in the foliage, that was actually done with a watercolor pencil and a piece of 100 grit sandpaper. You can see that the salt works on it. I've added salt in a number of places. And it, there's hardly any technique in watercolor that you can't translate now into this surface. So I, I always like to start the students with just the simplicity of painting the subject as a positive and no background. I'll show you some more. Now in this piece, you can see where I decided to put in some yellows. So I started down here with the alizarin crimson, went into some scarlet lake, beautiful rich color. Then I went into some Windsor orange and Windsor yellow. And I did it the same way by working on dry canvas and adding the color above and pushing it back into the color below. So the transition, even from yellow to orange, it's never perfect, but you just keep trying and it's really fun. Then I finished the painting by just doing a lot of reversals of light against dark, light against dark, and so on. You can see the color sanding is working beautifully. Here's another one, the uh, roses. I don't always work in that large format. Here you can see it's much smaller and lots of interlocking and overlapping. Here you can see I have a diptych again with the white background, this time with the same poppies that go into the yellows. And it was really fun doing a diptych. And if you do decide you want to do a diptych or a triptych in this case, as the flower overlaps, it's really nice to maybe have two-thirds or three-fourths on one and a third or a fourth on the other rather than cutting the piece right in half. I always try to do, I always think about where you're going to break that flower up. You can see in here it's two-thirds, one-third kind of relationship. And don't forget when you're working with these shapes that you, you want a shape that will kind of draw you into the next picture. And I like to do this with diagonals because it, the zigzagging is a lot more interesting than the static quality that sometimes you see in pictures where all the transitions from one unit to the next are straight across. I try really hard to always get diagonals. Don't forget to do some overlapping. When you add anything, try to overlap all the time. Don't just line it up. Here's another one with the white background. And I was originally thinking of it would hang on the wall like this. But you know what? I'm also thinking about the possibility of making it into a diamond. So these are, these are really fun. Square pictures are really fun. You can hang them many different ways. On, on this iris painting, again, I really had fun pushing it as dark as I could. A lot of overlapping. And you can see there are whites where I go back to the white, but they're usually next to the darks here. And every now and then I'll do a few lights that are against the white background, but I, I try to avoid that. I try to design the picture so it's almost all the edges are quite dark. This is kind of a fun combination here. I'm using alizarin crimson, which is a value nine transparent color. And I'm using it with Antwerp Blue, which is also a very dark value 9 color. And because it has a lot of yellow in it, when you mix the two together, you get these really dark, grayed down colors. Then if I want to, I can even go into a really warm dark. So I found this to be a really cool way to work. So what I do is I work with this puddle system. I get a puddle going of the alizarin and a puddle going of the Antwerp, and I just draw out of these as I need them. So I'll show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to start out with some pure color over here. Again, I'm working on the dry surface. This is the pure color. And then I'm going to add a few, some of the pure color up here. Okay. 
in. As I come in, I'm going to add some over here. Nice, pure alizarin. Very rich color. And then, because this is an area that needs to have light in it, I'm going to use a tissue. And I'm going to wet my brush, shake it out, take away some of the moisture so that I'm actually just pulling, drawing out this color into a nice, lean, almost white. And then I want it to get a little grayer in some areas, so now I'm going to add some of this darker color. And then I'll just pull that out with a little clean brush, take the extra moisture out. If I don't take out the extra moisture, then I'm, I'm pulling too much color. I've got to be careful. And over here, see I'm getting a little resist. I'm not sure what that's from. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> here you can see how I have lifted out some of the color. And what I'm going to do is show you just how this lifting takes place. It, you, you saw me lift wet into wet, but you can also lift on dry. So for example, if I want to lift out some of these nice lines here, some details, I can very easily come in here and lift right back to the white. Just so easy to lift back. And anytime I want to, I can just lift it back and kind of clean up some of the transitions. Very nice. I think it's just one of the coolest um, ways to work with the canvas. Well, now you can see I'm finally showing you a painting that has both background and subject. And of course, this is the way I really like to work. And the fun part here, look at the lifting, how easily I could go right back to the white and pull in some of these edges against the dark background. Now, layering is the biggest thing that it's very difficult to layer, but it is possible. What I'll do is just show you very quickly. I want to come in here with some darker color. I can just simply put it down and then wet my brush, shake it out, catch the extra. And just come in here and then kind of smooth it into the rest of the picture. And then if I make a big goof, oh gee, I wish I hadn't done that, I can go right back in and lift it out to the white again. So I think you'll, you'll be able to do just about every technique that you're familiar with. Another area I love to do on the canvas is total abstraction. And it's really fun combining it with mixed media. Here you can see I've added some gold leaf, I've added some collage, and pencil lines, extra pencil lines. Really fun. And if you carry it around to the edges, see then all you do is hang it on the wall. No fray. How easy is that? Here's one that I'm having a lot of fun with. Again, mixed media. A lot of collage combined with some color sanding, some webbing spray, all the things I love to do. And then right now I'm having fun coming in using a black pen and just doing kind of a zentangle kind of thing where I'm just going to come in and kind of pull this together with some more dark lines. I'm really excited about finishing this. I, I keep starting new ones and I haven't quite finished them all yet. But plan to. Okay. Here's another example of a mixed media on canvas. You can see here all these textures were Ogura and Angura paper, an Anru papers that I added. It was really fun. This is a technique I've used on watercolor for a long time. This is actually gauze. And you put the gauze down, put the color on top. So again, it's amazing. Anything you know how to do, you can do it again. And here, I'll just show you how I like to do this mixed media. I actually come in just with the 
color. And this is some Windsor yellow. And then I'll come in with a little Antwerp blue and mix it into a green on the paper to get a nice contrast going here. And then possibly a little gold. There's, there's no big mystery about these background colors. You'll recognize them. And then the fun part about the mixed media, I've got the Ogura here. This is a beautiful fibered paper. And I just take and pull it apart, put it right into, and you can see it absorbs the color. It's one of my favorite things to do. And then just with a little added water, softening the edge. That's how easily you can add collage. And then after this dries, I know I'm going to want it much darker. So then I can just come in with my darker colors and pop this out to a much, much higher contrast here. So this is a painting in, it's not quite done yet. It needs more darks. Of course, you can see all the whites that aren't painted. But that's how easily you can, I like to do collage. And then when this whole painting dries, and look at, how, look at how solid they are. When this painting dries, I simply put the glue right over it. So I, I do it spontaneously as I'm working, and then I put the glue on later. For my last example of combining mixed media, in other words, collage, and color sanding with watercolor pencils, and whatever you you choose. This is a real fun one where I first of all wet the whole surface, then I put these objects in, some of the ogura, enru, napkins, collage papers, but I save this path of white. I love this lesson. And then what I'm going because most, most paintings have light flowers on a dark background. But see this one is reversed. You have dark flowers on a light background. So it was just kind of a fun lesson, and you can see how beautifully the color sanding and the collage papers work. And then this will be ready now to glue down all the papers and then put a finish on. So I want to show you how these need to be finished. Okay, now we're ready to do the final finishing. This is a product called Dorland's Wax. And if you want to, you can simply spray this with like a Krylon UV resistant clear acrylic coating. And this comes in either a gloss or a matte. I usually use the gloss. And I usually do four to five coatings, take it outside, it's very toxic, and just spray all the surfaces really good. But my preference is to use this wax. And I like to do it with my fingers. So I pretty methodically start in one corner and start rubbing this around. And you can see it doesn't even make any difference if I go over collage or color. If I had color sanding on here, you would see that delicate color sanding does, isn't even affected by this. So it's just simply a matter of putting this on. Some people prefer to put a little glove on when they do it. I like to do it with my fingers. I really like touching it. And it doesn't take very long. Try to get it all with your fingers. You can actually feel when you've got enough on. Now if you want to, you can just leave it. You can just put this on and you're done. But I have a new trick up my sleeve that I'm excited to share with you. Just found out about this from my friend Wailan, and she found out about it through one of her students, I believe. So I just love the networking and sharing that goes on. This has been really fun. And I don't really know all the answers. I'm learning more every day, but I couldn't wait to share this much with you. So I'll worry about the edges later. Right now, this is ready. What I'm going to do is heat it up and until it looks shiny. Let's give it a try. Ooh, it doesn't take very long. You can 
see it's getting tiny. It's great. And I just do this until it's all tiny. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. And now I would just set this aside, give it time to dry completely. I don't know if I mentioned this, but make sure it's bone dry when you put this on. Don't have, give it a few days at least. Maybe hit it with a hair dryer to be sure it's really, really dry. And then um, put this wax on, heat it up, wait a couple days for it to dry completely. And then if you want to, you can simply take a soft rag or some cheesecloth and buff it. And it, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. <laughs> it's done, ready to hang on the wall. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's presentation and that you find joy in the experience of working with watercolor on canvas. Please check out our online store at carlinholman.com to find all the supplies that you saw here today, as well as our specials, upcoming workshops, and much more. I'm Carlin Holman, bidding you farewell. Thank you for watching.